Hello my lovelies. As we enter the second quarter of this year, I thought I should do a recap of some of the best PLs to air in the first quarter of 2022. These are PLs that received positive reviews from the audience and became quite popular among the PL fraternity. So this video will give you my recommendations of 15 best PLs to air in the first quarter of 2022. Please note that these PLs are in no particular order and this list only contains PLs that have ended. I have not included ongoing BLs in this list. So with that said, let's get started with the first one. Bad Buddy aired in the beginning of this year and quickly became one of the highest rated BLs in the industry. The magical chemistry between Om and Nanon won everybody's hearts. Bad Buddy had a simple yet effective storyline. It broke a lot of PL stereotypes and showed that even healthy and loving relationships between two men can be interesting and entertaining. Ever since they were young, Pran and Pat's families had a deep and raging rivalry, trying to one-up each other on everything. This also extended towards their sons. It was almost like rivalry was passed down as a family heirloom and the two boys became rivals as well, until they grew tired and became friends, really good friends. However, because of their family's rivalry, their friendship had to be kept under wraps. And so began a journey of secret friendship. And then perhaps a sweet secret romance? Paint With Love is an entertaining BL that although has some plot holes and the secondary couple is not given as much screen time and storyline as the main couple, I still enjoyed this because it has my favorite person Tay Darwin in it. I might be biased in my review because of that, but just to see him on screen was enough for me to include this BL in my favorites list. The cherry on top is the good chemistry between Singto and Tay. I would have liked to know more about both characters' backstory and why Maze was the way he was, but oh well, I will overlook that because the series was overall entertaining. The story follows Fab, an abstract painter who is hired by the owner of a media agency, Maze. To do a painting at a celebrity's wedding. After a disastrous accident, Fab will start working for Maze to pay his debts. What starts as a not-so-friendly worker-employer relationship soon evolves into something more. Let me just come out and say it. Dom and we were robbed. They deserved a better ending. But other than that, I liked everything about this series. From the screenplay to cinematography, everything was beautiful and had high production value. Acting of all six leads was outstanding and all the three couples had great chemistry with each other. Although I will say that Tay Chayapat or the actor who plays the role of Tapfa could do with some more acting lessons because he seemed to be lacking when compared to his partner Ton. Overall this was a refreshing drama that definitely deserves a watch. You're My Sky is a university BL that shows the progression of three different love stories. I think it will be hard to put into words what I feel about Not Me the series because the feelings it made me feel is beyond my ability to put into language. I was an off kilt fan since I saw them in Puppy Honey but after watching this series I have become a hardcore supporter. Not Me has raised the standard of BL so high that it will be hard for any production to match the level of perfection Not Me has reached. Not Me is a perfect example of a story that includes a timeless romance and also brings social awareness. Apart from Ofgun, each and every actor portrayed their role amazingly well and contributed to making this drama much more realistic than any others I have seen. Overall, if you watch one drama from this list, then watch Not Me. You won't be disappointed. Not Me is a story of twins black and white. When black is severely wounded and in a coma, White decides to assume his identity in order to find out the people behind the vicious attack on Black. The ambiguous relationship between Yakuza Shiro and policeman Ichiro will keep you hooked until the end. Kei and Yaku is not a BL but a suggestive bromance between a mob leader and a policeman who fake a relationship in order to launch an undercover operation to find the truth about an old cold case. The two main leads have great chemistry and the suspense part of the drama is well done and maintains viewer interest until the end. I have seen mostly Chinese dramas that have a crime thriller element with bromance but Japan has also stepped up their game with Kei and Yaku as it was perfectly done and a lot gayer than Chinese bromance dramas. After watching Supernaut in Oxygen the series, I was convinced that this guy cannot act. 
He gave no facial expressions and behaved like a robot in that show. But I was pleasantly surprised by his portrayal of Fob in Something in My Room. Maybe Oxygen the series was not really the right script or partner for him because he had lovely chemistry with Pat in Something in My Room. I like supernatural shows and combined with BL element I was really looking forward to Something in My Room and it did not disappoint. Everything from writing to screenplay to acting was well done and the production quality was great. I felt emotional at times watching this series and connected with both Pat and Fob's characters. Overall, this is one of the better BLs to come out in 2022. Pat just moved into a new rental house with his mother. There he meets Fob, an amnesiac ghost. Pat has to help Fob solve the mystery of his death within 49 days of Fob's death. Will they succeed? Kissable Lips is an enjoyable short little Korean BL that gives justice to the title Kissable Lips. Their kiss in this drama was amazing and it is worth a watch just to see the passionate kiss and chemistry between the leads. The writing is patchy and the drama feels rushed but it is still an entertaining watch. I am really hoping for a season 2 with a happy ending for this couple. Kissable Lips is a sweet and bloody campus romance between Juno, a vampire who is walking the path of extinction, and Minyoon, a human with pure blood. First Love Again is a surprisingly endearing drama that will win your heart with the sweet chemistry between the leads and a simple yet interesting plot. I will not lie, the story needed a lot of development but the acting of the main characters makes up for the plot holes and patchy storyline. The main couple kept me interested in their story throughout and their interactions were very fluffy and adorable. Overall, this was a light and enjoyable watch. The popular web novelist Yoon Suk has one big secret. He has been living for 300 years in order to achieve his first love. He is searching for his first love, Jong Ah Yoon, who suddenly appears in front of him as a 25-year-old man. Oh Pudding House is such a hidden gem in my opinion. Unfortunately, not many people have seen it because of lack of promotions, but it is so well made. I think it is one of the top Korean dramas to release this year. This is the least intense Korean BL I have seen so far. It's a light and fluffy watch with a simple love triangle. The actors have great chemistry and they are nice to look at. Overall, I really love this BL. Sulwon runs a boarding house where many quirky characters live. Kim Chol Soo is a high school PE teacher who comes to live at Sulwon's boarding house. Semantic Error is one of the most successful Korean BLs so far. This BL has raised the standard for Korean BLs and has brought KBLs to mainstream Korean media. There is something about Semantic Error that reels you in and makes you obsessed with the characters and their love story. Soham and Jae Chan have unparalleled chemistry and unique charisma that enchants the viewer and makes them fall in love with the characters. The story is very unique and the production quality is great. I'm still obsessed with this BL and keep replaying certain episodes to satisfy my craving for Sang Woo and Jae Young. Semantic Error is a love story between two university rivals who are completely different from each other. I absolutely loved Cherry Blossoms After Winter because it gives me nostalgia. This is like an old K-drama that I used to watch when I was younger but in BL form. This drama is heartfelt, warm and will give you a fuzzy feeling. The love and relationship of the main leads melts my heart and I feel like each episode is like a hug that gives warmth and comfort. Kangui and Jinyuk have great chemistry and play their roles convincingly. Their height difference gives me so much serotonin you would not believe. The death of his parents forces a 7-year-old boy named So Bom to move in with an adoptive family who have a young son of the same age named Jo Taesong. Bom and Taesong are childhood friends but become estranged after they grow up. Things however change when they both end up in the same class at school. I used to say that To My Star is my favorite Korean BL so far but I have to now change my stance to Blooming. Blooming stole my heart with its simplistic yet effective portrayal of love story between two individuals that meet and heal each other and make each other better people. This is a slice of life story that is so mundane but special in so many ways. There was not one scene in this series that I did not like or that seemed like a filler. Every single interaction and every single scene contributed in progressing the storyline beautifully. 
The cinematography was amazing and gave off I told Sunset about you vibes. I loved how understated their relationship was and how both of them had their flaws but it didn't stop them from loving each other and growing as individuals. I want to see more such stories come out of Korea because it truly shows how much potential Korea has to make compelling stories like this. Blooming gets a 10 out of 10 from me. Season 2 of Man Who Defies the World of PL released this year and once again became one of my favorites. Although the season had less comedy, it focused more on relationships, which was a delightful change. Moby was as usual hilarious and endearing. Sequels usually disappoint, but this one did not. I'm eagerly waiting for season 3. Continuing the story of the previous season, the protagonist Mobu finally confessed to his classmate Kikuchi. So he left his identity as a passerby and became the protagonist of the BL world. Unexpectedly, Kikuchi was back to the handsome ex-boyfriend Igarashi. This led Mobu to become the passerby again, so he decided to start over. My Ride was a sweet and fluffy watch that showed the love story between motorcycle taxi driver Morg and Dr. Tawan. While they might seem to come from different worlds, one day they meet by chance when Tawan hires Morg to take him across town. This first ride leads to another and another and soon Morg finds that he can't stop thinking about the handsome doctor. Meanwhile, Tawan also feels drawn to Morg and an unlikely friendship is born. This drama has minimal angst, cute storyline and nice chemistry between the leads. The kiss was a bit disappointing but the drama overall is an engaging watch. I highly recommend it. I only gave a chance to Love Stage because I really wanted to see Kauna and Turbo as the main lead. I must say I enjoyed this drama even though the story had a lot of flaws and the acting sometimes felt over the top. But Kauna and Turbo had great chemistry and the steamy scenes were hot hot hot. I also got invested in the story of the side couple and wish they got even more screen time. Overall Love Stage was a light, fluffy and cheesy watch. So these were my top 15 dramas that aired in the first quarter of 2022. I plan to make this a series and do a roundup of my top BLs at the end of every quarter. Let me know in the comments below which BLs did you enjoy watching from the first quarter of 2022. I would love to know your recommendations. I hope you liked today's video and if you did, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel for more BL rankings, news and gossip videos. See you next time. Bye.